morning everyone um it was lovely seeing you uh on the phone uh made me very sad actually uh and very emotional um which i don't do emotions blah. um so it was really really lovely to see you all and yeah as i say yeah. um so period three this is what we're going to do today um <laughs> I know um, the head has had that conversation with you where, um, well, I've not heard it firsthand, but apparently there's no point revising. Um, I, I don't know how true that is. As I said in my video this morning, um, they've only, the government have only said that they're not doing exams in May and June. So we don't know if that means the exams are cancelled altogether or if they're just being postponed or rearranged. So please, your notes, do not go home and burn them, okay? Keep them somewhere safe, okay? Try to keep it relatively fresh in mind. Yes, um, right now I wouldn't bother with revision, um, but be prepared to get back into it if the announcement comes out that the exams are gonna happen at a specific point okay but for now just keep things safe uh, and when it comes to us having our time off uh, we will see what happens um, I'm sure the government and the head will let us know in due course what we are actually going to be doing um, but for now what we're going to do is we've spent the last few lessons having a look at the required practical number eight which is water purification it seems daft to just leave that alone and just let it be filed away in a folder. Let's at very least finish that off, um, file it, but then use it to revise if the exams do actually happen. Okay, so what you need to do is get out the practical. It is required practical eight, purification and analysis of water. I've got a copy on my screen. and uh, Let's just switch that over. Super duper. So here we go. This is the required practical booklet. So this is the required practical booklet. Let's scroll down. Uh, we've done a lot of all this already. Um, so we described which one we thought thought was purest and why. But then we did see that actually visual clues of purity are not always a, a great indication of purity because there might be invisible things like contaminants and pathogens and all sorts of stuff. We labeled all this up or you should have filled this whoopsie daisy sorry we should have filled this all in as you were going through uh the practical anyway um and we didn't end up using these massive salts thing just because it didn't work particularly well and we didn't have a lot of time so we'll just skip over that bit okay now this bit is the important bit the assignment brief oopsie daisy sorry i'm scrolling through on two different devices here so it keeps getting a little bit confused what it's supposed to be doing. Okay so last lesson what we did is we got the samples of the seawater and tried to see if they were pure or not. So at the start what we did is well what you should have done some of you didn't quite get this done and uh, we can test for the presence of the sodium ions which is Na plus just by using a little flame test. So we uh, so let's go to test for uh, sodium ions, use a flame test, and the flame test should have turned yellow. Now the way we were doing it, it probably went yellow regardless because we were using uh, wooden splints, but it should have gone yellow to show that sodium was present there. So that's how we test for the sodium ions. That's that bit done. Uh, how do we test for the chloride ions? Well, the chloride ions are Cl minus. We test by the, for the chloride ions by adding nitric acid to remove uh, any contaminants such as carbonates that would give uh, false pro uh, false positives. Um, let's just go remove carbonate. And then you add silver nitrate, which is AgA. 
N. O3, silver nitrate there. Um, the reason why we add this is because it will do a little displacement reaction. The silver here is going to see that chloride or the other halides and go nom nom nom, I fancy having some of that, uh, and then swap it out, out for the nitrate bit. So what you get formed if chloride is present is AgCl, uh, which gives off a white precipitate or PPT for short. So the nitric acid and the silver nitrate test that is called the milk cream butter test because chlorine goes a sort of milky white, bromine goes uh, a creamy white and iodine goes a very very pale yellow so milk cream butter. How do we actually remove the sodium ions or the chloride ions? Uh, we remove it via distillation. So the technique is distillation. Briefly state the technique, done. Um, but then let's give a little bit of a description as well. It's not said described, but let's just go for it anyway. Uh, that the water would evaporate leaving behind the sodium ions and the chloride ions. Okay, uh, so that's worth two marks. Mark number one, mark number two. Um, to be fair, stating distillation would probably get you the first mark as well. So either that bit that bit there or that bit there for that. Uh, the first one that was worth two marks is one mark for each test and its corresponding results. So actually having the flame test going yellow is one mark, having the silver nitrate turning white solid, uh, that would get you the second mark for that one there. Three, describe how you'd confirm that the water is now safe to drink and that all the sodium chloride has been removed. Well, you essentially repeat the test from earlier. So uh, two marks. Let's get the first mark for saying, repeat the flame and halide test that we did earlier, um, and then sort of matching that up to results. So that would be mark number one. Mark number two is for matching that up to a result. So uh, the flame test, There should be no colour seen in the flame beyond the, just the wood burning because we use the wooden splints. Uh, if you use the nichrome wire, there'd be no colour at all. That's uh, similar to the inoculating loop. Uh, and the halide test. No colour change or, or no precipitate you could put as well. Okay, so that is uh, the assignment brief that we should have done really before the practical, but we went on with it anyway. Uh, here's the oopsie daisy. Oh, that's fun. Has it done that over every page? Nope, just those two. That's different. Okay, so here are the exam style questions. Um, if we do have an exam, these are the types of questions that will come up. Uh, if we don't have an exam, um, these sorts of things like purifying water are actually pretty useful. Um, so, you know, if the zombie apocalypse comes, now you know how to make clean water. Yay! So, uh, name the substance that is removed from seawater by desalination. Sal means salt. We talked about salt a lot when we started talking about purity. Uh, so desalination, what is being removed? Salt, or you could accept uh, obviously sodium chloride because that is the specific example here. Um, I'm also allowed to accept any dissolved salt, so all that is pretty good. Desalination, uh, one mark, so yeah, that's your one mark there. Desalination requires large amounts, naughty word, of energy. Desalination is only used when there is no other source of potable water. And as it says at the top there, potable water is just a lardy da way of saying water that is safe to drink. It is not necessarily pure, 
um, so it might have stuff in but it's usually stuff to make it cleaner so or, or nutrients as well actually you can put vitamins and minerals in uh, so why do we only use salt water um, yeah because it's a pain in the backside to actually purify it requires larger amount of energy with the large amount of energies uh, it is expensive now in an exam situation sometimes they accept expensive sometimes they don't um so let's just add in another one as well so uh the energy is going to come from fossil fuels so the heating process uh uses fossil fuels which are non renewable and release pollutants and let's get a bit more specific there such as carbon dioxide which leads to global warming so that's probably actually way more detail uh, then you'd have to go into, but I've covered all basics there, uh, all bases rather, I should say. Um, okay, let's fly on. C, first stage is filtration. Why is the water filtered? Filtration is about removing uh, the undissolved bits. So uh, let's go for insoluble solid. For example, sand rocks chunks of metal like dead fish anything like that okay uh, i'm just going to leave it as sand or rocks because they're the most sensible suggestion then uh chlorine gas is then fill added to the filtered water why is chlorine gas used to treat water uh this is i'd like to think fairly common sense i mean why do we use it in swimming pools aaron why do we use it in swimming pools you should know this we use it in swimming pools uh, to basically kill off uh, bacteria, microorganisms and all that sort of thing. So to kill, yeah, bacteria, microorganisms, pathogens uh, there's a few different ways that you could put it but basically to kill all the i was gonna say germs germs is a very weak word so i probably wouldn't go for that um to kill stuff uh all the halogens are toxic um therefore if you get the concentration of it right you can kill organisms whether they be tiny little organisms like bacteria viruses fungi protozoa all that sort of stuff all the way up to much bigger ones um which let's not go into that because that's not particularly pleasant. Uh, e, describe the test for chlorine gas. Uh, so describe, that's going to be mark number one, and give the result is going to be mark number two for a two marker. So describe the test. The test is you have damp blue litmus paper um, by the way this is the test for the gas not for the halide ion there so there is a slight difference uh, in the test so damp blue litmus paper um, within the exam situation all they're really looking for is litmus but again the other bits are just the extra detail that proves the examiner that you know what you are on about number two uh, the result of the test it will go from blue to red and then we'll decolorize or be bleached. So far as I'm aware, either one of those terms are absolutely fine. Equally, you can say it goes white. Um, they're all kind of similar uh, things that you're giving marks for there. Uh, I do believe there's just, yep, yeah, there's another one here. Is this going to be sensible this time or is it going to be silly? Yes, it's going to be silly. Ooh. Okay. Uh. 
So here we go. Uh, this is just filling in some boxes here. What's the pH of pure water? If it's pure, there's no contaminants, so there's no H plus ions, there's no H minus, therefore it should be neutral. And if it is pure, there should be a zero grams of any dissolved solid in there. Uh, two marks for that. That's really nice stuff. Mark number one, mark number two. What mass of dissolved solids is present in a hundred centimetre cubed of the sample of tap water? Well, here's the tap water uh, and there's the tap water's results. So that says that there is 0 0.5 grams per decimeter cubed is the unit. Uh, so that's in one decimeter cubed. Uh, one decimeter is the same as a thousand centimeters. That's when we're doing, uh, that's why when we're doing concentration calculations, we divide by a factor of a thousand. Uh, in this case, we're going from decimeters to centimeters. So we're going to times by a thousand. Uh, not that we have to, because that's that's still the same quantity there to get from there to there. So we don't actually have to do anything to this bit here. Uh, so um, we've got it as that the 0 0.5 grams in a thousand centimeter cubed. The question is asked about how many there is in a hundred centimeter cubed. To get from a thousand to a hundred, you have to divide. See Daisy. You have to divide by 10. Uh, so to get from there to there, you divide by 10. So to get from there to there, you also divide by 10. This is the idea of proportionality, uh, which you should have covered in lots of details in maths on lots of different occasions. They're coming up more and more on the uh, chemistry exams as well. So uh, we will see how that will affect us eventually. Uh, so the option that it is, is this one up here. Tick the one box and there it is. Uh, what mistake did the student make? Well, that thermometer there is not going to record that temperature particularly well, is it? It's not all the way in the water, therefore it's not going to get a decent reading. So, uh, thermometer is not fully submerged. So it's not all the way in the water, it's not going to measure the temperature correctly. Uh, that is only worth one mark, so that is probably it actually for that. Um, sometimes they do ask you to sort of explain, uh, suggest an improvement and all that sort of stuff. They don't seem to have bothered there. Okie dokie, next page. Okie dokie, next page, let's have a look. Pure water can be obtained from seawater by... Uh, neutralization just gets rid of the acids and the alkalis, so that might help, but it's not the one that they're actually looking for. Filtration will remove the solids, um, but not the dissolved solids. And so seawater, the problem is with it, it's got dissolved solids in, so we'd have to use distillation. Boiling point of pure water. Um, I'd like to think this is insultingly easy. It is 100 degrees. Thank you for that free mark. Um, how would they measure 25 centimeter cubed of seawater? Measuring cylinder, uh, but equally they could use a pipette or a burette. Remember, burette, not bioray, different things. How could they check the water had evaporated for two marks? Uh, what they basically have to do is, for one mark, uh, reheat it. And then reweigh it for the second mark. Oops. And then reweigh it. If it is the same mass, um, then all the water has evaporated. If it's not the same mass, then all the water had not evaporated. Uh, you can actually sum both of those up in one little neat sentence is by saying heat to a constant mass, because that is heating it until the weight doesn't change. So that covers that there as well.
Last section is a nice little calculation. This is the final bit that we have got to go through here. Um, so what information we've got here? We've got the mass of the evaporating basin. OK, so we've got sort of a, a before and after here. So let's find out the difference between the two. Uh, 24.04 minus 23.21. Uh, math skills, uh, three, or, you know, type it on in a calculator, that's fine as well. So we've got 0 0.83 grams there, and that said that was in 25 centimetre cubed, okie dokie. So we've got 0 0.83 grams in 25 centimetre cubed. Um, and it wants the mass in in a thousand centimetre cubed. So let's have a go at converting the twenty five. Oh, uh, So let's have a go at converting the 25 uh, all the way up to a thousand. Uh, easier way to do that is let's get it to 100 first. We can times 25 by four to get it up to 100. So to get from there, there to there, we times by four. So to get from there to there, we'll also times by four to get 3.32 grams in a hundred centimeter cubed. We want it in a thousand, so in a thousand centimeter cubed. We're going to times that by 10. So we times 100 by 10 to get it to 1,000. So we're going to times that by 10 to get it up. So 33.2 grams in 1,000 centimetre cubed. And that is the answer. Job done. Okay, easy peasy lemon squeezy. That is all sorted. Um, as I said before, we don't know what the future holds, so make sure you store them away somewhere safe uh, just in case the exams are on um, and we will see what happens. Um, I'm going to have to go now because this is a pre-recorded one uh, and I'd make it 11.15 right now and you're in lesson at uh, one thir uh, mm, and you're in lesson at 11.30 so I've got to do a tiny bit of editing and tidying up uh, and then... That'll be it, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. In theory, that is your last lesson of chemistry uh, for now. If we have to send resources home, we'll send resources home. Um, we shall see. Um, if I don't see you again, be good. Have good lives. Um, don't use too much Lural. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.